Um, so that's it. I mean, really, it's the end of the beginning. Hmm. I remember back in the late 1970s when I met Nicola Sakaguko, who was a survivor of Fort Henry and Petawawa at Camp Escasing Internment Camps. Uh, he told me about it, and I was totally surprised. I'd never heard about it in high school. I'd never heard about it in university. Um, he was the first survivor I met. And that was the beginning of the process of trying to recover the historical memory of what happened and right this injustice. And, you know, quite frankly, if I never do anything else in my life, um, this is something that I feel a certain amount of personal pride in. I, I help uh, tell their story. Uh, Mary Monko, who was a woman I met later in life, uh, Mary Monko Haskett was an internee from the Spirit Lake Camp in Quebec. And I remember very clearly asking her, I said, Mary, what do you want? Um, you know, what, how, how do we deal with this? And she, of course, was speaking in the context of what was done with the Japanese Canadians, where there was individual compensation paid to survivors and to descendants and that sort of thing. She said, look, I don't believe in descendants being paid for what the victims themselves endured. How do you define descendant anyway? I mean, is it a, a brother, a sister, a mother, or a, you know, a third generation person? Yeah, where, where do you draw the line? She said, no, not for descendants. Um, there were very few survivors, so she said, you know, there's, there's no point in giving me, Mary Monko, $21,000 in compensation. I mean, and I remember she joked, she said, well, what would I do, buy a Cadillac? <laughs> <laughs> and she said, no, what, the most important thing, she said, I want you to remember this. She says, I, I get the sense that you're the kind of guy that will see this to the end. And I guess she was right. But she said, what I really want is for people to remember. She said, this is about memory, not money. And I went, wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is, you know, a real Ukrainian lady. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about, give me, you know, I need some money for this. I, you know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to benefit from this. It was about memory. She wanted her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren, her great-grandchildren of mine um, to learn schools about justice that was done to the Ukrainians and other East Europeans. Uh, she wanted people to reflect on that experience. She wanted people to create art, theater, plays, poetry. She wanted people to sort of not celebrate it, but commemorate it and remember so that perhaps in some future period of domestic or international crisis, the same unfortunate behavior on the part of the Canadian state won't occur. And hats off to her. I mean, she's long gone to her and, and all the others. Can you think of some examples? Um, you, you just mentioned a, a few that Mary had suggested, but can you um, some specifics that you would like to how you would like to see this fund spent? Well, I mean, first of all, we have 15 years or almost 15 years now. Um, I would like to see people working on documentary films. I would like to see people working on art. I would like someone to write play. I would like someone to do uh, perhaps uh, an interpretation, a historical fiction. I would like people to, I would like people to use their imaginations and try, because the archival evidence is, there's bits and pieces of it. As I say, my friend Lothan Cordon has done quite a bit of archival research, but many of the archives were destroyed. So we'll never be able to sort of tell the full story. Uh, and even if we were, that would always be told through the eyes of an academic. And academics like myself tend to be very boring. Um, I, I would like to see people use their creative skills. Um, a Peter Schulstadt, for example, there in British Columbia, did a wonderful painting as part of his centennial series. The last one of his paintings is called Where Could We Escape To? It shows internees mm. in one of the British Columbia forests being marched under guard. Mm. I mean, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, Yuri Louve, of course, did this wonderful film called Freedom Had a Prize. Um, Marika but uh, Buturki did her own film um, on internment. I'd like to see more films. I'd like to see more artwork. I'd like to see more of that kind of uh, cultural um, reflection on, on this uh, unfortunate episode of Canadian history. Uh, I mean, in time, I suppose we will uh, fund academic projects as well. Uh, there is, I, I can tell your listeners, uh, one particularly good bit of news, Caves and Basin in Banff National Park with the heart, jewel, and the crown of the national park system, and of course, it it's kind of faded away. Um, just this past week, uh, Parks Canada, uh, the Government of Canada, announced 14, almost $14 million for renovation of the Cape Basin site. And I think that includes the $2.5 million that's going to be used to put up 
a reproduction of an internee barrack. So it'll be a kind of a museum at Cave and Basin dedicated to the intern experience. There'll be an expansion of the exhibits at Fort Henry here in Kingston at the Citadel in Halifax. These are the kinds of things that will teach uh, the present about the past so that in the future the un unhappy episodes aren't repeated. Now, those are, you know, kinds of things. Now, we will still continue, of course, putting up plaques and historical markers. I think, uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, at, um, when we were talking uh, in Edgewood, British Columbia on the 24th of October, or Saturday at 11 o'clock, we'll be unveiling a trilingual plaque recalling the use of Edgewood, British Columbia as a determined camp. I invite your listeners to join us that day. Um, we will be continuing to sort of place markers at the internment campsite. This will be number 21 in Edgewood, and we only have three more to do. We want to uh, uh, reconsecrate the uh, two or three internee cemeteries that we're aware of and make sure that they are properly hallowed because they hold the remains of internees. And, of course, we want to, frankly, thank the people along the way who, who helped make this possible. And, and, and just let me put in a, a plug here. Um, you know, there have been members of Parliament in every political party. So your listeners can be New Democrats, they can be Conservatives, they can be Liberals, they can be Green Party advocates, whatever they want. Each party has had individuals within it who uh, supported our cause. Uh, I think of Walter Lestewkin, Boris Rusnowski among the Liberals, Senator Andrzejczuk as, as a Conservative and as a Senator. Um, I think of uh, you know, virtually every Prime Minister has made a positive comment. But it's actually been, frankly, the Conservative Party under Mr. Harper that uh, resolved this issue with Jason Kenney. And within that party, the amazing thing is that it wasn't a Canadian MP of Ukrainian heritage that took the leading role. It was actually Inky Mark. Inky Mark from Dauphin, a, a member of parliament of Chinese heritage whose own parents, grandparents, paid the head tax. Isn't it remarkable that we live in a country where a Chinese Canadian became the standard bearer for a Ukrainian Canadian cause, and whose bill C331 uh, resulted in really the negotiations that led to a settlement. I wow, think what that, a country. I agree. I yeah, agree. That's cr that's just you know every time I say that I just go wow. And we as a community have not properly thanked Inky Mark. So I would encourage your listeners because Inky's retiring from Parliament. Uh, he won't be running again in whenever the next election is. Let's all hope it's not soon. But uh, he won't be running again. He's retiring from Parliament. So if your listeners want to really do something well, uh, well deserved, pick up a pen, pick up a piece of paper, and write Inky Mark a letter. You put O H M S on Her Majesty's service on the upper right hand corner of the envelope. You don't even have to put a stamp on it. Send it to Inky Mark MP, House of Commons, Ottawa, Ontario, K one A. 0A6, and just say, thank you, Inky Mark, because he deserves it. Folks, if we don't do this, you know, we don't deserve what we've got. Well, and at, on that note, Lubomir, I'd like to thank you very much for your work, for your incredible work, your your tenacity and steadfastness in, in getting it through this, and I am glad that there's you'll still be involved. This is kind of not, as you said, the end, um, and we will be seeing more and hearing more from you in the future. My pleasure. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.